This mink trail is in a loping gate. There's a group of four and a space and a group of four, then another space, another group of four, and so on through this mud. These are some nice tracks, so I'd like to show you some of these up close to show you the details of a mink track. So mink tracks can look kind of pointy, and if you look here, you can see why. And the reason is that this claw is really close to the toe. So the claw and the toe come to sort of a point in the track and um, make them look a little, a little strange, actually. They do have five toes, but in this case, there's an overlap of one track on top of the other. So you're not seeing all five toes. Here's a really nice set of mink tracks with scale. So this is uh, millimeters, I mean centimeters, excuse me, and uh, inches. So in this particular type of gate, um, the way they move is front hind, front hind. In this case though, they're all overlapping and sort of jumbled together, and it's hard to tell which one is which. Um, you can see five toes on this nice track right here. There's a really uh, nice drop toe here, further back in the track. And this one here has somewhat of a more canine appearance to it, um, which makes me suspect that that's actually the hind track in, instead of this one, but really I'm not positive on that. Uh, because of the position in the, in the trail, I would say front hind, uh, front got stepped on by hind there, and these two being the hinds, I mean, uh, those two being the hinds would make sense in that particular case. So if this one's the front, it would be a right front because the thumb is dropped right there. So without seeing the fifth toe right there, just because I'm seeing these toes close together, now that could just be a result of splay, the way it landed in the substrate, so I could be totally wrong. The position of this toe may also be due to splay. So I'd like to follow this a little bit and see if I can uh, find more detail. Sometimes mink tracks look less than perfect like this. You'll only see four toes out of five, and there's an overlap here. You got one track on top of the other, but it's really a jumble and it's hard to make them out. And uh, in this case, you have a hind track on top of a front track right there, and that's because of the position in the gate. You can tell that. Here's a gray fox. So looking at these ones, what this is is four tracks, and it looks like two. So you have the hind tracks landing on top of the fronts in this case. And that really makes a jumble of toes, which is very difficult to make out and uh, to tell which foot is which on these. So right here, the hind track landed right on top of this nice front track here. That toe came from the front track. This one, this one came from the front. These all came from the hind track right there. In this nice set of mink tracks right here, we're looking at the left side of the body. Here's the right side right here. You have the hind track here on top of the front track, and the hind track is nearly a perfect example right here. See the pad itself has um, lobes to it. So there's a lobe here, and these two toes, which are three and four, share a lobe. Lobes here and here for these toes. So you have um, the sharing of the lobes on those toes three and four, but you also have separate ones for the other toes that, that help you to tell um, that this is a mustelid track. So a lot of animals have fused um, lobes down here, like raccoons, they're just flat. Um, but on the mustelids, they're lobed like that. So you're looking at um, a toe one here, two, three, four, and five. It's not really especially dropped back further in the track right here, but it is in, um, these two toes are really close together, I think, on the hind rather than the front, which tends to splay out more. So those two toes tend to splay a little bit more on the front than on the hind track of mink. So that's one way to tell. The other one is position in the trail, which one is on top, which track landed first and which track landed on top of it. So if you think about that, the hind track has to land on top of the front because as they move, um, they're lifting those front feet and the hind tracks land right where they were. Okay, this is a left hind track of a mink and it has landed almost perfectly on top of the front and all you can see of the front really is just a toe here, a little bit of pushed up soil over here. So toe number one on this left hind track of a mink is here, two, three, four, and five. Notice how three and four are fairly close together, like I said earlier. They share a pad, this single pad here services toes three and four. This pad, small one, is for toe one. That's the pad for toe two. 
and that's the pad for toe five. This toe is dropped a little bit further back in the track. These two toes are a little closer together, and that's how I tell a hind track of a mink from a front, although sometimes they are difficult to tell apart because their feet are almost the same size. They're really difficult. So I'm going to come back to this, this set of tracks again. And what I wanted to show you here, remember I went up there and I was showing you how the hind tracks, um, the toes are a little bit closer together and uh, they look a little bit narrower sometimes. That's why I think this is the hind track and the inner toe is not showing here. Um, this one appears to be on top of that one. You can see right here, you can see a little bit of fur that's almost on top of the toes of this track. That's why I think this is probably a very splayed right front track. Um, you can see a little bit of fur here from its heel. And then this one here is clearly the hind track on top of the front track. But these are the two that were in question. And I believe because of the, the narrowness, the, the two toes being close together there, toes three and four, these two, and that's five over there. And I think toe one would be in here, but it's just not showing up. And this one is just very splayed, but these toes are not as close together as are those toes. And that's why I think this is the right front track. So sometimes in tracking, you're going to make mistakes with animals like this that have tracks that are so closely uh, related in size, number of toes, and appearance. And so it does help to go further ahead on the trail and look at some of those characteristics that you see and try to determine front versus hind um, you know, on species like this. A lot of species, there, there's a size difference and it helps, but mink and uh, weasels, their tracks are just very hard to sort out sometimes. And that's just the way it is in tracking. You will make mistakes. Um, that's a part of tracking. So just uh, use it as a learning process like I did here. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you learned something there and enjoyed it and uh, have fun with it. Sometimes mink trails are not as clear as the ones we were looking at. And sometimes they just look like this. Jumble of toes and maybe a, um, an overlapping uh, foot or two. And in this case, uh, the gate will help you to identify this as a mink because it's using that two by two lope where each one of these is two tracks here and here in a set of four, then a space, then a set of four, and so on using that gate. And also the number of toes that I showed you back there on that one track. Let's go up here. Here's a little bit clearer. So yeah, follow it out a little ways and look at the size of the tracks and the number of toes. And this is an overlap of two tracks front and hind and front and hind here, each one having five toes and it just looks like a jumble. But the size and the gate also help to identify that as a mink.